Ah, the B-52, the ancient plane that will probably live on beyond the ripe age of 100. But to make a plane do that, there needs to be a system for maintaining or even upgrading them. And one of such upgrades, as some of you may already know, is the B-52 re-engine program. You may have even watched some videos about it already. But why listen to a qualified expert talking about it in monotone, when you can listen to some loner put a fun spin on the story in monotone? We now live in a postmodernistic society, after all. But I digress. Anyways, as intimidating as the B-52 looks with its 8 engines, dark livery, and overall sinister appearance, it's actually slightly smaller and lighter than your average 787. Nowadays, the Air Force is looking to re-engine the old plane. Of course, keen observers would quickly ask the question, why can't the B-52 just use fewer engines? The 787, after all, uses two, so why not the B-52? Two. While this may seem pretty straightforward at first, if you're a full-time nerd yourself, you may already know that it's not going to work well. Say if we replace the original 8 TF-33 engines with two engines with four times the thrust, like say the GNX on the 787, that would mean the two engine pylons and their connection points will feel the strain of at least 68,000 pounds of thrust, instead of the original 34,000 pounds. And that's before accounting for safety factors. To make that work would require the strengthening of the wings, pylons, plumbing, and a whole lot more. While that is not at all impossible to do with more money, keep in mind that we're dealing with government budgets here. So sadly, that rules out a twin-engine B-52. But what about four engines? Say, one engine per pylon, like a normal plane. That shouldn't be an issue, right? Since they should hypothetically feel the same forces. This idea seems a bit more convincing too, especially since the plane has flown with one engine per pylon in the past, and those planes stay together. Well, not so fast because we'll need to bring up an ancient drawback of the plane, its tail. It is kind of special in that the rudder is tiny in comparison to the rest of the vertical stabilizer. The designers reportedly intended to create an all-moving tail, but due to doubts about the technology and complications with it, they didn't. So they just attached a fun-sized rudder instead, one that would be scoffed at by modern standards for years to come. But that is an important spec, because one of the main factors for choosing the appropriate rudder size is determined by the plane's engine out capability. The more asymmetric thrust you get, the more rudder you'll need. Now depending on the configuration, losing one out of eight engines on the B-52 can already be a handful. But if the plane only has four engines, losing one will require a much bigger correction from the puny rudder increasing the chances of the plane not being able to correct itself in such emergencies. Of course, you can reduce thrust on the opposite engine, but then you'll be down to like two and a half engines. If the Air Force went with the four engine option, the project would not just be about replacing engines and their control systems, but also about redesigning and replacing the tail assembly and their connections, and possibly the entire rear fuselage. Fundamentally, it is for that reason, and because of money, once again we're dealing with government budgets here, that the Air Force chose to stick with 8 engines rather than 2 or 4 for their re-engine program. Which is quite a shame, because it would be so cool to hear a 60-year-old bomber sound like a 787 or an A321neo, instead of sounding like a regional jet. But whatever, best of luck to the teams, and long live the king. <laughs>